All right, I wanted to do a new video on the new XR12. That is the 12 channel version of the XR18 and yet to be shipped XR16. You can see that I am connected to the XR12. And just so you know, I am using the XR18 as the recording interface. I've got that set up and then I switch my network over to the XR12 so we can see that. I do not have any audio running through the XR12. This video is just a quick overview of the software and what's different about the XR12 and the XR18. There are a few things that you should know about this. It's certainly laid out differently hardware-wise than the XR18. You've got four mic inputs, and those are combo jacks, so you can use them as line inputs as well. And then, of course, you've got eight line inputs. The last two have high Z capabilities. But what's interesting is that Behringer did not change the software and remove channels 13 through 16. So they're actually here, even though there's no hardware input available to them, you can route things to these channels. So it might be interesting to see what people come up with. You could obviously do parallel processing. So for example, there is no channel 13 input on the front, but if we want to go in and go to its input, we could pick uh, any of the 12 true inputs as its source and process differently. So anything going into mic input one will appear on channel one, but it's also going to appear on 13 as well. It'll be interesting to see what people come up with here on how to use these channels. The other thing that's different, of course, is you only have two physical aux outputs. So you'll notice here that uh, I can only send out to two locations physically, but Behringer again left in four additional buses or aux sends. And if you click on these here and go into your sends, you'll notice that they're all defaulted to a subgroup. And that simply means that you can subgroup, just like we did in the analog days, all of your drum mics, for example, take them out of left, right. So let's, let's take a look at that real quick. If I had four microphones that I wanted to subgroup together so they could be compressed together, I could send them all to the same subgroup. I would want to go through and make sure that all of these microphones did not go out my left, right. Or it would be going there twice because ultimately we're going to send the subgroup out to the left, right. Okay. So these four microphone channels are not going out the left, right. They are going out subgroup number one. Now subgroup number one is aux number three, and we're going to consider that bus number three. So a subgroup is probably more appropriately called bus three. Subgroup three, bus three is the same thing. And so now these four microphones are going through bus number three, unmuted, and if I click bus number three and go to its output, I can assign it to the left, right. And that is a must. You, can, you have to make sure that you send your subgroup or your bus out to the left, right, or you'll never hear it. So now the only way for these to get to the main speakers is through this bus. So I did just confirm that these buses work like they would in an analog day. So again, I've got a signal now running through channel one. We are not recording or listening to the XR12. We are recording through the XR18 as on my two channel interface just to have my voice here. So what we've got here is an input source coming into channel one. It has been unrouted or unassigned to the left, right. So it's not going to the left, right. We obviously see signal going to the left, right. And that is through the bus. And I also confirmed that the bus fader has no effect on the volume going to uh, the bus, just like it would be if you were signing on an eight bus analog mixer. What you're sending is directly proportional to what you're sending to the left, right. So only your master fader is going to control the volume to each of these buses. If we were to do this on all four channels, take them out of left, right, and bus them to bus number three, 
we would then be able to go to bus three and do some master compression or EQ on that output. And of course, our bus three, of course, has nowhere to go physically on the output, but we can assign it to the left, right. And without that being checked, you will notice that we're going to lose the um, main left, right again. And we can now see that the bus is not sending anything to our left, right, because it's muted and turned down. So I'll unmute. We still should not have anything to left, right. And the bus master is functioning correctly. I'll keep it 12 dB low. And it's down a little bit low. And I can go back and get that up to Unity. And we'll see we've got a hotter signal now. So when you're using the internal buses, your main left-right channel feed uh, is going to dictate what goes through the bus. Of course, your master left-right of the bus mute affects it going to left-right, and so does the master volume, but the volume over here does not. It is uh, not being used. It might be cool if they just took away all these volumes. It might alleviate some confusion on how that's working. There's no need to have any volumes there because they simply don't do anything. And by the way, the same technique works on the uh, XR18. If you want to do true busing and not use your six analog outputs, you can convert all of these in the sends section to buses and they would work the same way. And you'll get this icon here and you'll see the bus is either on or assigned essentially. So you're just assigning this or not assigning that to a bus. And again, the big thing you want to make sure you do is unassign this out of the left, right, or you'll be sending this microphone to the left, right directly, and then again to the left, right through the bus. And if you process the bus, you certainly could have um, latency issues, which would sound like a phasing problem. So keep that in mind. A few other things seem like they're not quite up to date on the XR Edit app. Uh, obviously, the XR12 does not have P16 outputs or any of the uh, USB in and out routing for recording. It's just got the two channel USB. That seems to be fixed on the iPad app. It's more applicable to what's actually available on the XR12. So just keep in mind if you get the XR12 and you see all this stuff, don't freak out uh, when it doesn't work or if you think you've got features that aren't working. A lot of this is simply not on the XR12, and I'm sure Behringer will strip this out of the program at some point. All right, well, I hope that helps you out. That's just a real quick overview of what the XR12 offers and how similar it is to the XR18 and a few differences from the XR12 and the XR18. If you have any questions, let us know on our YouTube channel or be sure to check out our Facebook user group, Behringer XR.